the, uh, the animation that um, that uh, we're bringing up here shows the latest uh, large Mars quake that we uh, obtained just about about two weeks ago, uh, and this was the biggest uh, event of the of the mission. Uh, it's a magnitude five event. The biggest thing that we've seen uh, before that was the magnitude four, which is almost ten times smaller. Basically, we've been able to map out the inside of Mars for the very first time in history. Uh, we're able to get the uh, size of the core. We're able to, to deduce something about its density and, therefore, the composition of the core. We've uh, uh, detected the uh, bottom of the crust, and we're able to, uh, de to uh, determine the thickness of the, the Martian crust. And we've been able to probe the, the mantle of, the, of, of Mars, uh, of, and be, we're able to, uh, to do something about its temperature structure and its, uh, and its uh, mineralogical structure. You see on the left-hand side here, this is a selfie that was taken of the lander when we first landed back in November of 2018. So that was three and a half years ago. You see the solar panels are nice and black. Um, that allows us to collect energy from the, the, the sun there. And you can see upon landing, we're approximately about uh, 5,000 watt hours per sol for available energy to do our operations. Now we use the term sol, and that's really referring to a Martian day. And it's different than an Earth day. It's approximately 40 minutes longer. So we do need to take that difference in time into our operations timeline. So if you look at the right-hand side today, we're at about a tenth of that available power, approximately about 500 watt hours per sol. I think, you know, understanding Mars and studying Mars' interior structure answers key questions about the early formation of these rocky planets in our inner solar system, including Mercury, Venus, Earth, Earth's moon, um, and Mars. And you know, trying to understand what they were like more than four billion years ago, as well as helping us understand rocky exoplanets. And we're just so lucky to have this great nursery of rocky planets nearby that we can study and help inform how we interpret data for some of the distant exoplanets, the thousands of distant exoplanets that we're discovering now. Good news is we, we learned something new about the soil of Mars. Uh, the bad news is we weren't able to get down more than just to, to, to be able to, to bury the mole itself, and we weren't able to get our heat flow measurement that, that we had wanted to get. Um, we we're still able to do a lot of uh, sci uh, science with the mole, get uh, some thermal measurements and physical measurements on the soil itself, but you know, getting not being able to get that heat flow measurement was probably the, the biggest disappointment uh, of, of the mission.